Check one, two. What up? It's Bro Luck coming at you with another podcast. Um, I decided to do a video podcast just so you guys can kind of see visually what my facial expressions are. Because I'm kind of passionate about this topic. Um, basically, this podcast is going to be called People Don't Care What You Use exclamation point exclamation point exclamation point people don't care what you use uh, most of the time when you get in a conversation with other producers it's like hey man what you use well you know i use pro tools because it's a standard and then the guy you know that uses uh ableton he's like well you know i use ableton because it's more technical and you can you know do more with the warp mode and then the other guy steps in well i use fruity loops you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, it just makes it easier to do this and whoop out the band. And then another guy says, oh, well, you know, um, I, I use Mixcraft. And then there's the other guy, he says, well, you know, I just use a hard disk recorder. I got a multi-track hard disk recorder, you know, and then I just mix everything down to that. And then I go from there into whatever. And uh, what I want to say is people don't care what you use. When I say people, I mean music connoisseurs, people that actually buy your music off iTunes, people that actually invest in your vinyl records that you take to the plant to press up. They don't care if you use Fruity Loops or if you use, if you was beating on a desk and you had a freaking pan flute and you sampled to your iPhone and took that and, and put it into a... a a CD burner, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A, a RCA two track CD burner and uploaded it online from that. They don't care. They don't care what you use. A lot of times I think producers get caught up in so much of what another producer uses. It's like, oh, you know, I wouldn't do that if I was you. You know, some cats is downright nasty, like, oh, you use that. But at the end of the day, it don't matter what you use. You know, if you got Pro Tools 12 or if you got Sonar 1, you know, if you got Cubase 1 or whatever, the only thing that it boils down to is the final outcome and what your sound sounds like. I know cats that got Pro Tools and they beats and they production, they mix down, they have people come and record sounds like garbage would i tell them that if they ask me yeah if i was consulting them yeah i, I would say something but for the most part you know you're going to spend all this money on equipment if you ain't developed your ear if you ain't developed this thing right here it don't matter that's guys that i mean if you listen to any mad lib record from where he was just using uh, the SP. Dude was flipping the crap out of the technical aspect of just the, the, the individual piece itself. You feel me? And so, you know, and the sound that he got out of the SP is amazing. Some cats with Pro Tools 12 today cannot do what Mad Lib was doing with the SP alone. Okay? Alone, by itself. So, this podcast, man, this is the type of podcast that'll make you take all your bootleg software and wipe it off of your computer and buy one piece of software and mix down and master on that joint. <laughs> It'll make you throw away your laptop and get get a uh, get a aw16 <laughs> with, with some uh sure mics uh man i'm sure mics are freaking amazing man you freaking ding them around for like 15 years they still sound great but anyways back to the subject it don't matter what you use it's the final outcome fans are not asking what type of microphone Katy Perry recorded her vocals on. Fans are not asking the Black Eyed Peas what multi-tracker they used for 
Let's Get It Started, which I find hilarious that that song was originally Let's Get Retarded, <laughs> and they put the verse. <laughs> but nobody's asking what they tracked that song out on. Nobody. All they want to do is turn the music on and hear how great it sounds. If you're a producer, develop your ear, man. No matter what piece of equipment that you're using. I don't care if the, all you had was enough money to get a new mark turntable and you bought your first two vinyl records and you don't have nothing to record on yet. Listen. Listen. And emulate. Listen and emulate. If you don't know what emulate means, look it up. <laughs> emulate what you're hearing. Alright, so yeah, it's been another podcast. People don't care what you use. Other producers might. And you may come into some politics when you bring your crap. You know what? Before I end this thing, I watched a Teddy Riley interview. Um, last week, I think he did a Red Bull interview. If you're on YouTube, go look it up. He did a Red Bull music interview where he was talking about how he recorded uh, the majority of the, the uh, embryo uh new jack city movement stuff which is new jack swing i'm sorry not new jack city new jack swing stuff um on a hard disk recorder and he recorded uh the vocals in the bathroom in the bathtub joe in the shower and when he took everything into the uh commercial studio to to uh to redo they asked him just to track the vocals out uh, from the hard disk recorder as well that he was using at home because they could not emulate that bathroom shower stall reverb. Now, mind you, Teddy Riley has countless hits from No Diggity to, I mean, I, I can go on and on. He's produced on, he's produced everybody from Michael Jackson to, oh my God, Michael Jackson alone. You know what I'm saying? Look Teddy Riley up if you don't know who Teddy Riley is. I'm going to smack you if you don't. <laughs> but dude had a hard disc recorder. His kicks was punching better than, harder than everybody else's. His snares was cracking. If you listen to Teddy Riley's snares today, nobody's snares crack like Teddy Riley's. But from what he was using, he bought the best sound out of him. Even in the commercial studio, they could not emulate his sound. Take what I'm saying to you with a grain of, I'm going to make the best sound that I possibly can with the gear that I have. If you, uh, if you have a laptop, you're 10 steps ahead of everybody. If you got a hard disk recorder, there's so many things that you can do. So many things that you can do. The way that you track your sounds out. So, it's Bro Love. It's been another podcast. Subscribe to this joint on iTunes. Um, it is available on iTunes. And wherever you listen to your podcast at. And uh, go and grab my drum kits. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. YouTube.com forward slash Bro Love. And then go out there to all the social media land networks. Even if it's on MySpace, <laughs> I'm on there. Just uh, search Brother Brother Music. I'm out. <laughs>